All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, tonight, today is uh, Thursday, on no, uh, February nineteenth. It's uh, twelve thirty-three in the morning. Um, we're going to get started as we usually do uh, with the Amber Alert cases. Um, unfortunately, um, there's a, there's a case we want to talk about today, and Deborah has more information. Um, this is about Dominic Arsenal. Uh, so, Deborah, can you can you tell us uh, what happened? Um, Dominic was found. Um, he was found at approximately 11.45 a.m. It would actually be considered yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's it's really sad. Um, he, Dominic is no longer with us. He's deceased. And um, I've done quite a bit of reading and um, trying to catch up and, and, you know, find out what was going on in all of the cases. Um, but if Kinsley wants to explain, you know, what's going on with Dominic, that would be wonderful because she's the one that's gathering the bulk of the information and getting it posted in the forum for these cases right now. Right. Kinsley contacted me via Skype earlier today and let me know the bad news. Uh, Kinsley, so what did you find out? Um, basically, all that they're saying at this point is that they did locate him in the lake approximately 100 to 200 yards away from where he was last seen. Okay. Well, I've got and that. I've got that posted. Yeah, they did say that based on his, you know, weight and size, that it would take somewhere between seven and ten days for him to start floating. Should he be in the lake? And they had already looked over it earlier, yes, now yesterday morning, and did not see him. And went back and looked later around 11:45 and didn't find him. Okay. Um, One thing that I did see was that there was a couple of times previously that when they had um, cadaver dogs in a boat out on the lake, there there were some alerts. I think I think I saw yeah. that it happened like twice. Okay. Yes, and they even went, it, they went uh, diving and they were unable to find anything at that time. Okay. Do we know how big this um this uh this the body of water was? White. It says White Oak Lake. It says White Oak Lake, approximately 100 to 200 yards away, um, where Arsenal was last seen. So. So what basically it happened and possibly the child just wandered off and, and, and drowned? Right. They are sending it, the, the child for an autopsy, though, to rule out any foul play whatsoever. Okay. It says right here, authorities do not suspect foul play. Um, guys, this is this is really sad, and we hate to see something like this. As, as far as what, what I have posted here, um, um, unfortunately, um, I was wrong, guys. Um, just looking what I, what I have, I mean, I know it's not much information, but um, that, that's not what I got. And, and I, like I said before, I did not get the feeling of death, so I'm really sorry about that. Um, there was uh, a dream drawing that was posted um, on the 16th um, about an Amber Alert case, somebody being found on the 19th. Well, he was found on, on the, um, in the Amber Alert cases. We're talking about one of these three. Um, but our hopes were that, you know, somebody would be found alive. Um, that said... You know, I'm still hoping that this dream drawing was incorrect and possibly, you know, hopefully Aji will be found alive tomorrow or, any, or anybody. This is the really sad news. But as far as uh, my work goes on this, um, I was wrong, and I have posted it to reflect that on the, um, on the case file. Um, but the, the, that DD is up there. And what it says is uh, Amber Alert, child found, 219-09, Lake, sign, path. And um, really, I don't even know what that means, but... Um, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I was wrong. So, um, moving on, we're gonna we're gonna close that case as we always do. Um, when somebody is found, uh, we do move it to the um, located section in the forums. If you guys want to um, pay respects to the family, whatever, we will have links up on the forum, uh, so you guys can go ahead and do that. Um, once again, it's very sad, and our, our hearts and prayers go out to his family. Um, you guys want to say anything else on this one? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and cl officially close it. Well, I have the same thing for you to say. My my thoughts and prayers go out to um, Dominic's family on this. And, you know, like you said, we'll get information in the forum when it's available. Okay. Um, okay, th thank you. Okay, um, we're going to move on to our other Amber Alert case. Um, everybody knows this one, Haley and Marie Cummings. Um, our case file was opened on, um, on February 11th. Uh, uh, real, real quick, Deborah, in, in, just in a few seconds, uh, tell us uh, what what it, what had happened as far as the disappearance goes. 
and then we'll talk about any, any type of news that we um, that you guys may have gotten. Okay, well, um, Haley went missing on um, Tuesday, February 10th, and yes, that was that was on the last Tuesday. Um, and she had last been, and it was reported at about 3.30 in the morning. Um, she had last been spotted the night before when she was put to bed, and um, then she was missing at around 3 in the morning. Okay. So uh, she was being taken care of at the time by her father's 17-year-old girlfriend. Um, there's been a lot of inconsistencies and a lot of developments in this case. Um, unfortunately, um, it has not resulted in Haley being found yet, so we're hoping and praying that that will occur soon. Okay. Um, well, this is a case pretty much everyone's familiar with. This one has, you know, gotten a lot of attention. Um, once again, I'm not the one that researches everything. So, um, Kinsley, you want to talk about what's going on? And Yeah, sorry, Kinsley. I didn't mean to leave you out. I know, I know that you've been doing a lot of work. Okay, what I want to bring that up then. Okay, the dream drawing on um, the 11th it does seem like it's fitting. Um, it says, Father knows girlfriend is lying, not in state bedroom, not at home. Um, once again, 213 smoking. So that actually might mean something then. Um, Absolutely. So once again, guys, right, you get, let's post this. Yeah. yeah. So if there's anything in here that's of use to anybody, you know, um, uh, if you find something, please post it in the forums. I mean, we, we try to get back to emails as soon as possible, but the forums are the way to do it instantly. You know, just, just when you sign up the forums, the, the link should be at the top of your screen. We, uh, you can sign in. Uh, there's, there's really, you just got to give an email address, and that's it, and you're, you're free to post. Um, keep, keep, please keep it related to that case, and anything that you might find, including my dream drawings or whatever else you find, please post. Um, one other thing too, we do welcome. I might not be considered a psychic. A lot of people think that I am. We do welcome psychics, and if you're psychic, if you're a medium or whatever you are, you know, we welcome your posts. Feel free to post it. I mean, whatever you, you have, please share it with us because that's what's important. We got to come together, and we actually have to, you know, use whatever abilities that we have um, to, to help to, to help in these cases. Okay, so we have that that information there. Um, I have not done anything else. I've been actually kind of busy with some new Amber Alerts that we'll talk about here shortly. Um, on a little bit better news, I'm not saying how much better. Um, we have done some work. Um, um, for, for Aji, uh, the Shears case, um, and actually I haven't done some work, um, Deborah's done some work, and now she doesn't want to talk about it, but what um, we've noticed is that this case, like again, is still not getting detention from the media at all. Um, just doing a quick Google search, you'll find that, you know, not even a website for this, for this child has been, you know, purchased or run or anything like that, and, um, and it's really sad that that's come to that. <clears throat> or, or that it's not come to that, that no, no one's, um, you know, I know a lot of people are concerned, but no one's really stepped up, you know, to the plate and got something going. So I'm really happy to say that Deborah purchased the domain findaji.com. Um, we have that up now. Uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to get some designs. We're going to, we're going to make it look nice. And we're going to be posting a forum uh, attached to that. And that forum will be available in, I think, 12 different languages. So guys, the, the, uh, the link to to his new site or the site that we the Deborah had purchased and we got set up is on the case file, and it's find f i n d a j i a d j i dot com. It's a real simple URL, um, and right now we have the information um, just up from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children that is up there on the site. So Deborah, I just want to say thank you for doing it. Um, 
I know you didn't want me to bring it up, really, but you know you deserve you know at least a, at least a thank you for me for for doing it because no one else has. And you know that. Well, you're welcome, and uh, thank you to you also for getting the site up today. No, not a problem. At and all. yes, we're going to do some more work on it and make it real nice. Yeah, you know, like I but said, you guys. Got it yeah. up. Hey, you have his poster up there. This poster's up there. We got it. We will we will host it. Um, it's just yeah, what's going to be up there is is this. Uh, Mainly, we're into, we want to get pictures up there, and we want to get dialogue going um, from the people in the area. That's why we will we'll set up the language packs. So whatever language that they speak, um, I think we're talking about, uh, you said Creole, um, and may, I, th I think possibly Spanish, or whatever, those links will be up there. So anybody um, um, that does not speak English very well or not at all should be able to access um, the forms from the, right there. So anyway, so it's findaji.com. Um, Right now, like I said, we have that information up there, and we, we will be working on that uh, right after this show a little bit to um, to get the forums up and stuff like that. But right now, some, you know, the information is up there. If anybody has a picture that we don't have of him, um, please send it to us, and we will get it posted ASAP. Um, I know that there is one more picture available out there for Aji that is not there yet. Um, okay. What I've seen so far has been mainly two pictures. All right. Well, this so is the one that... that people have more than what's on the... Um, the actual printable poster from mm -hmm. the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, uh -huh. please let us know. Okay. Now, I saved that file from them. I actually have a, a local copy of that poster that they can print right off the site, too. And then when all our links go to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, they don't go to us. Um, nothing's going to be linked to us. It, it all goes to these agencies. Um, and if you guys, yeah, if you have any pictures or anything or any information, please post in the forums. Um, we are, we're trying uh, our best to, to get the word out. And, and Kinsley and, um, and Deborah will be doing an awesome job on that one. And let, let's hopefully this, um, you know, this case ends happily. Um, so enough, enough said on that case. Um, we, we covered Haley Marie uh, Cummings, and now we have a, a new Amber Alert case. Guys, I just uh, finished this one uh, today. Um, Deborah, can you talk about it real quick while I get the, uh, the images up? Yes, I can. I can give the stats for this one. Okay. Um, her name is Annabelle Williams hyphen Forlano. Um, the Forlano has been spelled two different ways, depending on where on the internet you see it. Um, it's spelled F-U-R-L-A-N-O or F-O-R-L-A-N-O. Okay, that's, that's good. Um, I'm going I'm to put that other spelling right now in there. F-U-R. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Um, she has brown hair and um, she's a little white girl. Um, she is three feet four inches tall. And she has brown eyes, five years old, and 35 pounds. She was last seen wearing a Hannah Montana shirt, a pink jacket, blue jeans, pink boots with fringe on them. Um, what happened here was she was at a Chuck E. Cheese restaurant for a supervised visitation. And her father, Carl Forlano, and then um, her mother, Angela Faith Williams, were there. Um, as far as stats, um, I don't have really anything for the father. Um, the mother is 46 years old, and um, they abducted her on a supervised visitation. They're traveling in um, a black SUV type vehicle, Texas license plates RC8C54. Um, they are hauling a 1996 box trailer on the back of it, Texas license plate Y10163. And um, Annabelle is missing out of Conroe, Texas. Okay. Now her date of birth then is December 10th of 2003. And she was abducted at approximately 8.40 last night. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. Um, this case was uh, requested to be open on um, February 18th uh, by Deborah. Uh, if you see at the top uh, right next to her picture is a copy of that email. Uh, once, I, once again, guys, I, I, I want to say what I, what I do. I actually take that... Uh, picture and I folded that put it under the pillow and, not, and this is what I come up with um, or not sometimes um, fortunately uh, t tonight or last night I was able to get some information uh, the first dream drawing says uh, uh, Memphis motel um, he is in, in in 27 room motel mother now I think that means a 27 room motel so more than likely it's probably a single story motel um, I mean I don't have anything else on that one um, the next thing says uh, Highway 55 in Memphis, uh, toolbox and back of truck, 12, four days. Okay, um, 
really not too specific, but um, I did, well, all I did was post a thing of Memphis, which really Memphis is a very large city, um, but there aren't too many uh, hotels that are, might be next to Highway 55, which uh, turns out to be an interstate. There is an interstate uh, 55 uh, that runs into Memphis. Um, so maybe we'd be checking for a uh, hotels, or, or I'm sorry, a motel on um, maybe off that highway. Um, I didn't really look at Google Maps too well. I just got the um, uh, Highway 55. You'll see it's on the map right there, right next to some place called Treasure Island, which is an island. Um, looking at this, I don't think um, there's uh, the child's in any danger. Um, remember, I could be wrong. I'm wrong a lot, like like you see. Um, but it says with um, with mother. So what you're saying, with parental abduction, that does seem to to, um, to make sense or go in line with what you, you just said. Um, well, another thing I'd like to add, too, then, sure. is that she's missing out of Texas, out of Conroe, Texas. Okay. And um, there has been some talk that they could possibly be en route to New York. So Memphis, Tennessee would be right along the way for that. Okay. I got Google Earth right here. Okay. Um so that's what I have in that one. I mean, I guess we, this would be a redo, but um, I don't get the feeling of urgency as far as, uh, you know, really uh, the, the child's in danger. Um, and if it was a parental um, abduction, usually um, these cases do end uh, happily. Um, and let's hope it ends like that. But I, I can do additional work on this um, if, if requested. Um, but what I said is Highway 55 Memphis, if there is a motel um, that has apparently 27 rooms. Um, I would be on the lookout for that and just just see if anybody like uh, have, has checked in in there. Um, I think that's all I have on that one. You you guys have anything else on that one? Um, not really. And since this case has just been open, we don't you know. And the Amber Alert is so new, you know, a little over 24 hours old since she went missing. Right. Um, there's not a lot of information available and. Um, it, what is available will be posted in the forums very soon. Okay. It says four days. Um, so possibly in four days, which would be um, calendar here, like the 21st, um, maybe maybe um, that, that's what that means. Um, she'll be located in, in um, by the 21st, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, or four days might be something totally different. I don't know. Um, but thank you. Thank you on that. Um, so Kinsley, any, Kinsley, Deborah, anything else on this one? Well, Kinsley, when I found when I found this Amber Alert last night, I let Kinsley know right away. Yeah. Um, when I realized it, it had happened, and um, it was very, very odd. And Kinsley immediately asked me something that you want to bring that up, Kinsley. Well, you sent me the Amber Alert, and I looked at it and realized that she was taken from Chuck E. Cheese, which reminded me of a conversation that you and I had during that conversation, his son, Brandon, was asking about going to, I think he called it chocolate cheese? Yeah, chocolate cheese, no. yeah. It's Chuck E. Cheese, but it's chocolate cheese. Said, meant Chuck E. Cheese to him. Yeah, Brandon's three. So we kind of laughed about that. And um, ironically enough, um, Brandon said that he thought that was a little too ironic. I don't know, but that, yeah, that he doesn't say Chucky or chocolate cheese too much, but um, they, 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 I guess well, that is a little weird. Help, don't you, Brian? What's that? You do need some help, don't you? Uh, uh, <laughs> Listen, guys, my wife doesn't um, want, um, she doesn't mind, but um, I don't really think it's a good idea to, um, to, to Oh, I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, Samuel, <laughs> Samuel, is it, Samuel does draw a lot of stuff. I've posted some of the stuff he does. Um, but I don't want to get my kids involved in, in anything, you know, with a bunch of people. Um, but yeah, you know, definitely Samuel is definitely not shy of anybody, which I think is I'm a little scared about. But um, as you see, if you guys do see, he sometimes comes in here. Actually, I mean, I, I'm out here in a carport. Um, I don't just my office is actually I took I have a carport and I put two by fours and uh, OSB siding up and I made a little carport and that's where I'm at right now. And a lot of times they'll come out back and, and see what I'm doing. But Samuel's definitely not shy. Um, so, anyways, um, so we I have... I would like to remind you, um, I know I mentioned it to you, but I, I guess um, I want other people to know 
there was another Amber Alert issued now also. Yeah, and I have um, that. I okay. Say a whole lot. Right. Um, as you don't can, please. You know yeah. Saying. Yeah. Just, just the email. Um, and we will say that we have a three-year-old little boy and a one-year-old little girl missing out of Washington State right now. And it happened um, during the day, actually yesterday, because it's quite late now. It's actually the 19th. Um, okay, they're aware? I said we, we are aware. Right, we are aware. As soon as I noticed it, um, I, you know, kept the information aside, so... Um, Brian will be uh, opening this case tonight, then. Right, right Brian. Um, yeah, yeah. Whatever Deb Deborah sends me is is what I print. I print it out just like you'll see at the top of most of these cases. Now I, I take it and I fold it and that's it. Um, generally, we do not talk about uh, the case until it's up. Once it's up, I don't care. We we, we don't talk about the case. Um, you know, I mean, uh, like the one we were just talking about until it's up. And so that's why they're talking about it. So yeah, that's that should just so I uh, um, just to end any type of confusion like if I'm getting information from the piece of paper or or some from somewhere else well the honest truth is you normally print it and don't even look at it right <laughs> no I don't want well, I can say that with everything I, I, <laughs> as you, you've done me a little bit long uh, you've done me for a while now I don't I, I scan stuff but no no for these cases I do not uh, I do that for my own reasons um, but I'll, I'll definitely when a case is open I'll definitely research everything I can do um, you know, like I said, I use Google Maps, um, Microsoft Maps, and then I have you guys. So that helps if out. If everyone could go to AmberAlert.gov mm -hmm. and get the information for the new Amber Alert, I'd really appreciate that. And one other I, thing, I too. I can't say much more. That if, would be AmberAlert.gov. If you guys go to the, the forum that's listed up there, there is an Amber Alert ticker on the top of the screen. Right. That's how I notice the new one. Sometimes yeah. I notice it there. I actually, you know, I have one on my desktop, too, but... Um, that's where I saw this latest one that you'll be doing next. Okay. Yeah, like I said, we'll, uh, Amber Alerts uh, are a priority. Uh, children are a priority. Um, there's only so many we can do, and that those are our priorities. We do try to do the, the cases that we think that we can help on uh, first, and then um, and then the cases um, by request, which we have a lot of them, but we are doing them. Um, just because we were in a, the United States or America, um, it doesn't matter where the person went missing. All countries um, will help in any way. It doesn't make any difference where. Um, I do know that there is not an Amber Alert system in most parts of the world, but there's something similar to that, and we do know about it. Um, well, we don't know about all of it. We do know about, about, about some of the systems that they have in place. Okay, um, so the next case we have, um, I'm going to be case number 212, um, Jesus. De La Cruz. Um, the, the case was uh, requested to be open on November 19th of 2006. Um, I'm not sure, but it was, I guess it's by anonymous, but I got to it on uh, December 2nd of 2006. And I believe Deborah has the um, information on this case. Yes, I do. Um, Jesus De La Cruz has been missing since September 28th, 1996 from Lynn, Massachusetts. Um, this is classified as a non-family abduction. His date of birth is January 3rd, 1990. He was six years old when he went missing, and he just turned, um, he would have just had his 19th birthday then, last month. Um, he was four feet six and 60 pounds when he went missing. Hispanic male, brown hair, brown eyes, scar above his left eye, birthmarks on his left calf and the, right, and the left side of his forehead. Um, pierced ear on the left side. He had short hair when he disappeared. Last seen wearing a white t-shirt, blue jeans, and brown or yellow boots, possibly high top shoes instead of the boots. Um, on that day, on September 28, 1996, he was last seen at about 6 p.m. He was walking uh, with another nine-year-old on Park Street in the Commons area of Lynn, Massachusetts, which is near where he lived, near, near his home. He was pushing his pink hockey bicycle at the time because it had two flat tires. And he had been playing in Bennett Circle that day, so he was on his way home afterwards. Um, the boys were approached by an unidentified Caucasian man in his 20s or 30s with shoulder-length black hair. Um, the man was walking a dog, a shepherd collie mix, that had one white eye and one brown eye. Um, the man was able to lure Jesus away by promising him a new bicycle. So he was never seen again after that point. 
Um, the other little boy was fine, but Jesus, you know, was lured. Um, and then they, the authorities did identify a man um, named Robert C. Leves, L-E-V-E-S-U-U-E, that's how you pronounce it, 26-year-old, um, and they identified him shortly after Jesus went missing. Um, they searched his apartment, and investigators discovered duct tape and handcuffs there. They don't know if those things were re related to Jesus' case, but this man lived just around the corner from Jesus' home in 1996, so a couple years prior to when he went missing. So, you know, he could have kept his eye on him, too. Um, this man owned a dog that matched the description of the dog that had the two different colored eyes. And the dog's name was Peaches. And um, this man here, um, he called him sick to his job the evening Jesus went missing also. And he got arrested shortly after Jesus went missing. They charged him with a parole violation, motor vehicle offenses, and possession of stolen property. Um, no, wait a second here. Okay, I, w I misspoke earlier. Um, Jesus went missing in 1996 also. I, okay. I was thinking for some reason in my mind it was 98, so the man could have been watching him, but no, um, it, you know, it, he could have been because he lived nearby, but there wasn't a two-year gap there. Sorry about that, guys. Um, this guy was never charged in connection with Jesus' disappearance, though. Um, Department of Social Services made some accusations against Jesus's mother. Her name is Magdalena Rodriguez. And some of them, um, sometimes she's referred to as Magdalena Ramirez uh, for neglect shortly after he disappeared. She did not report him missing for six hours, um, six hours after he went missing. And there was a theory that um, possibly he was abducted as a result of um, drug use by his family members. Uh, the mother denied doing anything wrong and she claimed that the accusations and you know the way she was treated was a result of racism um there was talk after he'd gone missing that he could have been taken to puerto rico new york city or the dominican republic as um in some sort of way for his mom to stay out of trouble um there's i have not been able to find out what possible trouble she was in. Um, I've just um, learned about, you know, her not reporting him missing in a timely manner. Uh, she denied it, all of those types of, you know, allegations against her, and she claims she's not concealing anything at this point. She did relocate to another part of Massachusetts, and then Jesus's father's name is Juan, with the same last name, De La Cruz, and he was accused of allegedly abusing um, Jesus, and he had actually threatened to abduct him from um, his mother's custody prior to him disappearing. Um, the father, however, was home at the time that Jesus went missing. So that, you know, kind of, that gave him an alibi. They did not um, charge him. The father, you know, connected with the case at all. And um, he does, the father still maintains contact with the police you know, trying to further the investigation into Jesus' disappearance. There have been several sightings of Jesus around the country since he went missing, but none of them were ever confirmed to actually be him. So at this point, you know, there's really not much for them to go on. They have some different theories, and that's about it. Okay. So, uh, what you have there, Brian? Yeah, I have a lot of stuff here. Um, I think this one, um, this one could, this one could provide an, um, an exact location. Um, we'll be research a little bit more. I was just typing um, the translation, other than what I put down here, the actually word for word. Um, on 12, uh, the night of the 12, December 2nd, 06, uh, this is what I have. Uh, again, guys, if, if you're you're on the page, just click on that image of, of him. And, um, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, it says, has attacked several children. Eric killed him before going to Florida. Uh, white male. 37, 37. I'm assuming that a uh, man named Eric, he's a white male, 37 years old, probably at the time, um, uh, murdered um, Jesus. The second, uh, well, what it says right below it, I think that Jesus was assaulted by this man. His real name could be Eric, um, but he's not going by that name. He's a white man, could be 37 years old. I'm going to skip that. It talks about, I wrote the number 37, but I'm assuming that's his age. It, wasn't, it was unsure that, that, if that was his age or not. 
he has done this many times in the past and may, and may have some sort of criminal uh, record um, to reflect that. Oh, I'm sure he doesn't have murder or something. He, he could be <clears throat> possibly a uh, registered sex offender. Um, I think that Eric moved to Florida several years ago. And uh, the next one says, brown hair. He lived one half mile from Jesus' home, Florida necklace. So wherever Jesus' home was, <coughs> one, <coughs> sorry, one half mile away, right away from that. Um, and I still know that, you know, a half mile away from home, that's a pretty big radius. But I do think um, there's, there's more here, information here that might be of use. Uh, this man lived in a small brown home one half mile from, from Jesus. I drew, a, I drew a gold necklace with a cross that was attached to it. And it says, not sure why. Okay, so a small brown house, one house, one half mile from Jesus' home. Um, okay, this is, this is um, says what, the next one says, was very close to where Eric worked. 41, 11, 2, 21 a.m. Someone saw this two hours to go. Um, that's what I just wrote. Um, what it said here uh, previously, which is still posted, just right below it. The body was buried some close to, very close to where Eric used to work, on a small hillside at 2:21 a.m. Um, it took him two hours to do this, and, the, and a person saw him do it. But I'm not sure the person that saw this uh, witnessed witnesses even knew what happening, what was happening. So basically, I think that um, unfortunately, Jesus is not alive. Um, this is, you know, I hope he is. I'm just saying, as far as the, the dream goes, um, this man here uh, that lived really close to him. Um, uh, murdered him, and I'm sure some other bad things, and um, um, buried his body next to where he worked. So I think that the information here warrants us to do a little more investigation and get a map up of the exact location where Jesus lived, and then we'll, like we've done before in some cases, do a uh, Google um, radius search. You know, I'm talking about Deborah, the uh, circle thing, yes, I and know then what find that. And we, use, what I did last time was actually make a buffer zone, you know, plus or minus a couple hundred meters, and then see if we can find a brown house and maybe do a little research on that one. Um, that's what I think we should do. And I don't think we need to, I do think we should need to redo this, but I wouldn't put it high on the priority list right now. Okay? Okay, I've, I've written down for, you know, a, a map and also um, for a redo, but, you know, like you said, unfortunately, yeah, well, you know, he's deceased, but, but, well, case, but yeah. It is, yeah, that's true, but if this if this guy, if this killer's still out there, um, you, know, you know, there's always a chance that this killer, you know, could already be in prison for another murder, too, but let's, you know, let's, let's see what we can do. You know what I'm saying? There are, there are murderers that are locked up right now that have committed a lot of other murders that just haven't fessed up to them. Well, and sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't, and, you know, they will. That's, well, they sometimes they make up panic. stuff, too. You know, right, exactly. hope, we've talked about that earlier too in another case. Okay, um, the next case um, is uh, Brian Dos Santos Gomez. Um, it's case number uh, 213. Let me get the picture up real quick. <clears throat> Deborah, why I get this picture up, can you go ahead and read? Um, real quick, the case was requested to be opened by Jenna on, um, on December 2nd, 2006. Um, the very next day that I got this case open, um, and, and Deborah, you got the rest of on that while I get this picture up here. Okay, um, like you said, Brian Dos Santos Gomez, um, his date of birth, November 3rd, 2006, and he has been missing since, let's see, um, he went missing on December 1st, 2006, he was 29 days old when he went missing, so he was quite young. Um, he went missing from Fort Myers, Florida. He was 24 inches long and 12 pounds at the time, black hair, brown eyes, and um, he is Hispanic. Um, he went missing near where he lived. There was some um, circumstances involved, though, um, of how he was abducted. Um, he was taken by an unknown female, and they were believed to be traveling in a 1998 to 2000 um, black two-door Ford Explorer, and uh, one thing that's unique about the vehicle is that, you know, there, there was um, peel and window tint all over the vehicle, but what had happened was um, he was with his mom, and I believe there was another woman, and possibly another child, and um, this person wanted directions, this unknown female, and um, 
she was able to convince them to get into her vehicle. And she ended up abducting Brian. I mean, the mom, Brian's mom was fine. And, you know, she was let go after some time. But this unknown female was actually prepared. She had an infant car seat in her Explorer. She had diapers. So she had her supplies lined up, too. They do feel that she was looking to abduct a baby. And unfortunately, a 29-day-old baby, it's pretty hard to, you know, you had mentioned, you know, an age progression. How do you age progress a baby? Right. Well, exactly. How do you do that with a 29-day-old baby? Right. You know, when that young, they have a little different look to them. There was, though, a telephone call made from Brian's mom's cell phone. They do have an audio of the abductor leaving a message. I have a link here I'm going to put in Skype for you to the FBI poster. And there is a link on that poster to listen to the audio. So I'm going to send this to you. But do you want to go over what's on the case file there? Yeah, let me do that real quick. Okay, this case, I think that Brian is alive. And he is, well, the last one was done. There was actually two separate dream drawings done on this. And that was done on 12-16-2006. But what it says right now, the first dream drawing says, right now this woman has Brian. She's a Mexican, she's a female Mexican woman in her 20s, 5'5", 181 pounds. I say 181 pounds, so, and I realize that's probably on a license or something. I don't know exactly, but more likely that specific would mean that's on her license. The baby's safe and she may have drugs on her. The second one says she is driving north in this vehicle, which is drawn poorly, and I think the police will locate her soon. What's on here says 75 North, police chase ends, care, I think it's car. I know the word Ford is up there. It could be like a Ford. I don't know what that could be, if it's a Ford. This trailer has something to do with the case. On there it says 51, 22 days. Let me write that down. Um, trailer with broken skirt. I think this, that's on the thing on the bottom. The skirt on the bottom of the trailer. Deborah, we're going to be going over 45 minutes on this one. Um, so let's just keep going. We'll just keep it under an hour. So hopefully it'll record. Okay. Okay. Well, it better record. Well, then let's 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 be safe, guys. Let's let's uh. Let me check something real quick. Um. Okay. We we've got. We can we can do it. We got about um, eight minutes. Okay. Um. Real quick. Uh, it says the trailer uh, has a broken skirt. Twenty-two days. And then on the bottom it says this trailer has something to do with the case. There is more uh, uh writing up up the top in. But really, nothing too specific, um, except for the 75N. Anyways, there's been news re um, reported on that. That's posted um, right after that. The second uh, dream drawing was done uh, on the 16th, and it says Brian uh, is safe. Um, and once again, it says five foot five, 180. Uh, parents knock why? Um, it just said. Knock. Why? And then there's. I've got. To, I've got to spend some time with this, exactly figure out what what is written there. And I don't know what that is an image of. It looks like a washing machine. Um, it, basically, what I said. What I say on there it says the second RV looks um, to be like the same as the first, and I still think Brian is safe. Uh, also says parents know why. Suggest the parents are suggest that the parents are questioned again just in case they do know something. So to me, it's looking like the parents know what happened, uh, and I don't think that the child is. is uh, is 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 in any well is is I think the child's alive. Okay. Um, anything else in that, Deborah? So we get to get to this last case here. No, I think we just move on to the last one. Okay. Um, the the last case for tonight uh, is case number two fourteen. Uh, Edna Ria Miller. Um, the case was open. Let me get rid of his last name right there. Okay, the case was uh, open, requested to be opened by Ken, uh, who uh, who is her, uh, Ken is his aunt, um, and uh, responded to that and got the case open the next day. Um, 
So once again, case number 214, opened December 3rd, 2006. First dream drawing says, money brought to the lake here, Florida, alive. I'm assuming she's not dead. That's what it says right there. The next one is a picture. It looks something like a portrait. Um, when I draw it like that, to me, that looks like a uh, actually a portrait, like a, a, a frame. It looks like it has a frame. On that, sh it says, uh, she kept a record in the back, 21. And it says, not sure who this is a picture of, but um, that's what that says right there. Um, and then here he is writing, the, uh, he wrote back about, here's a picture of my aunt. And, um, I, okay, well, what I said back on December 6th, it says, um, I will be, he has to do it again, decipher it. Um, uh, I wrote back and said, I will do this for, for you. Please, please give me some time. I have 20 some requests to do first. Okay, so we owe him one. Deborah. Okay. We I we owe we owe Kenneth that. one. Yeah. Or we do for Edna Marie Miller. Yeah, we owe him one. Uh, I, I and Kenneth, and Kenneth, I'm really sorry about that. I, I um, it's my fault. I made a mistake. Um, I should have gotten to it sooner, but we will uh, get this one done soon. When I say soon, very soon. Um, we will. Um, the, your your case is in the forums. Anything that we talk about is in the forums. Um, the links are up there. And again, at the top of every show, you'll you'll see the link to the forum, which is missing person forum. And the BrianStreams.com forward slash TV is a link to all our show archives that we, we've been doing so far. Um, and I think that's it, it on, um, on on that case right there. Um, other than we will be getting that done. I know I probably missed something. Deborah? Um, did I miss um, yes, we, did not, we didn't have any stats for Edna. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Um, there we go. That's what I missed. Okay, let, let, me, let me get her picture back up again. Do I have time to get through those real fast? Real fast. Okay. She's been missing since September 7, 2001. Her name is Edna Marie Miller. Her nickname is Rhea, R-E-A. She went missing from Big Clifty, Kentucky. Her date of birth, October 10, 1920. She was 80 years old when she went missing, 4 feet 10, 90 pounds. Caucasian female, white hair, blue eyes, a scar on her temple. She wears eyeglasses and dentures. She had neither of those with her when she went missing. She was last seen at her residence in the vicinity of the 200 block of Hitchcock Road in Big Clifty, Kentucky, on September 7, 2001. Eyeglasses and dentures were found inside of her home after she was, um, it was realized she had gone missing. Her purse was located in her truck, and a strange thing, though, was the driver's side door was locked, and the passenger um, side door was unlocked. Uh, normally, it kind of the other scenario. Um, yeah, sure is. They extensively searched for her, but they came up with no signs whatsoever. There's really not much to go on in this case. Okay. Okay, so like we said, we will um, we will definitely get this one um, done. Um, uh, before we go tonight, I want, I want to bring up um, uh, Annabelle's picture again. Um, guys, she just went missing. Um, please post in the forums anything that you find. This is her picture. Um, we'll try to get more up. Um, this is Annabelle Williams. Um, and she's she's missing, guys. And, and as, as as far as the, as far as 1:17 a.m. Um, on the on February 19th, uh, 2009, she is still missing. Um, that said, I know we're running out of time. We did uh, uh, last night's show. We had um, Glenn Dean Grant on uh, about human trafficking. Uh, we just uh, scratched the surface on this case, and we will on this topic, and we will be talking more about human trafficking uh, soon. And um, I want, I want to thank everybody uh, for tuning in tonight, and um, and I'm re really really sorry about what had happened to Dominic. And, and our hearts and prayers do go out to the family. Um, Deborah and Kinsley, I want to thank you again for being on tonight. You're welcome. Um, and everybody, uh, have a, have a, a really good night. Thank you very much.